Hello, and welcome. Today, we will be discussing three very important guitar styles in American music history. The first, from Dr. William Bledsoe, historian of rock and roll. Second, from Grayson Bledsoe, who will be discussing blues. And third, from Dr. Frank Strummer, professor of American alternative music history and gypsy jazz historian. And now introducing Dr. William Bledsoe, historian of rock and roll. The guitar solo as it relates to rock and roll music um, actually goes back to uh, uh, early R&B. Uh, the first song of note that had a guitar solo was Ernest Tubbs' song, uh, Walking Over the Floor for You. Uh, in that particular piece of music, the entire song, the course and everything, was worked around uh, the uh, guitar solo. And though guitar solos, even in a classical sense, go all the way back to the Renaissance, it, in the popular, uh, the popular idea of a guitar solo really began with that song. Certainly, as we go through the 50s, uh, Chuck Berry uh, certainly demonstrated his capacity to play the guitar in guitar solos in his songs, but we go into the early 60s uh, uh, with variations of that idea, but probably, in my opinion, the best example of a guitar solo in that it is a hook for the song, meaning that when you listen to the song, you are listening to it, anticipating uh, this performance, it would have to be the Beatles version of Twist and Shout. Now, interestingly enough, that is the only number one Beatles song that they did not write, uh, but they did such an incredible job with it. In the first version of it, which was a slower paced song, even in that format, it still was designed for the guitar solo to be a feature, but in the Beatles song, it is the main event. And I think that at that moment, the anticipation and the expectation of guitar solos in rock and roll music and popular music from that point forward um, was just part of the expectation of the listener, and it all began with that. Secondly, we have Grayson Bledsoe, historian of blues and enthusiast. Thanks for having me on. Um, of course, when we go through uh, this um, audio session, um, be sure and look at the photographs um, that are that are that are displayed. These photographs really give a a feel to uh, the audio recording, and they allow for um, you know the. You know, it really creates an atmosphere uh, with with the speakers. My name is Grayson Bledsoe, and I am a uh, I, I am a fan of, of blues guitar, particularly when it's mixed with pop. I think um, that probably the best example um, of of blues and pop is Jimi Hendrix. Um, he's able to take the um, He's able to take the, that old blues sound and be able to morph it into to rock and roll. Of course, he's dead now, but in the 60s, um, in the heyday of, of the, the psychedelic rock and roll, he, he fused blues with that. Um, today, in my opinion, I think that um, John Mayer is probably he's one of the greatest guitarists of all time, but what he does is he's able to put... Um, he puts blues in his music. Now, what we hear from him, um, a lot of the stuff he does with blues is, um, you know, the, are his solos. Um, but um, he, he's, a, he's a great live performer, so he's able to, to perform um, a blue, blue solos um, really perfectly. Um, and he was inspired uh, by Jimi Hendrix, but he was also really inspired by Stevie Ray Vaughan. And Stevie Ray Vaughan is probably one of the greatest blues guitarists of all time, um, at least in you know in, in 
rock and roll pop history. I can't, you know, we can't indicatively say that he was, but at least of people in the forefront, he, I'd say he's you know, at least in the top five. Um, but blues guitar playing is very American. I don't think that really there's, besides maybe bluegrass and jazz, um, uh, blues is really, it really is, is so, is so American. And I think that that's what makes it special is that it really has a, a culture around it. And, um, I, I hope that, uh, I hope that, you know, blues continues to stay in um, the forefront of, of pop, popular music. And now I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Frank Strummer. Um, he's a professor um, of alternative music uh, in America and also a gypsy jazz uh, fanatic. So gypsy jazz is a very, um, very unique type of American uh, sort of a spring off of early rock and roll. Of course, Gypsy Jazz came way before the Beatles or the you know the the the, the animals or you know all the all the famous rock and roll bands of you know the you know the sixties and the seventies that came you know with you know the British invasion and all that. So it was way before that. And um, Gypsy Jazz really was sort of a conglomeration of of styles from multiple cultures, you know, spanning from the Melangians uh, all the way to, you know, the sort of uh, a Moorish, Moorish French uh, culture that was really prominent in, in, in the Pennsylvania, New Jersey area in the United States. So you had this sort of merger of, you know, this, of, of really just gypsy music, you know, music of people who travelled in, you know, the rusty old wooden caravan and, you know, they never had a home, so they would just set up and they would just grab whatever they could, you know, a box or whatever, you know, a string with maybe just four guitar, uh, uh, pardon, a guitar with maybe just four strings. And they would just, you know, they'd retune the strings and just play. And a lot of gypsy jazz is sort of in, it's in a G or D chord. So it's got a very much, it has, it, a lot of it, it's in a three, four time or a 6-8 time, so it has sort of a, you know, a, a waltz sound, or more of, if you're familiar with, you know, the Celtic uh, jig, it's got sort of that sound to it. So, it's very, very fast pace, and it's very, um, it, you can hear multiple cultures in the music, and of course it was influenced by American style as well. The most famous of the Gypsy Jazz um, players was uh, Django Reinhardt in the uh, late 20s, early 30s, and he carried in his music all the way up to the 40s and 50s in his, uh, in his later age. So, really, you know, he, he played, in, what was unique is that he, his hand was burned, and he played with just three fingers his index, his middle, and his thumb. But he could play so fast um, that he that it really, I mean, it was almost like he was playing the rhythm and the lead at the same time. And so from this came sort of your improvisation jazz pieces that you see a lot in modern day jazz. And, um, you know, it was really great because uh, it just opened a door to a bunch of other things. And uh, really, it, it, you know, Django, uh, Django Reinhardt, really is the founder, the forefather of Gypsy Jazz. And Gypsy Jazz is a very important part of not just American history, but, you know, music history and jazz history all the same. Thank you for watching our slideshow. We hope that you've enjoyed yourself. Have a nice day.